Hi, fiends. Thanks for joining me on Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror for the Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon reunion. We were having so much fun and chatting so much that it got a bit long, so we're cutting the interview into two segments. So grab your favorite tasty beverage and let's join them. Hi, fiends. Thanks for joining me on Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. And I am delighted to be here with the cast from Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Plus and me. also with your friendly neighborhood, Noah. Yeah. This isn't coffee, by the way. This is soda. <laughs> and, um, well, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Except you, Noah. We know who you are. <laughs> I'm the most important one here, so I don't have to have an introduction. <laughs> Nathan? Angela. I'm Nathan Basil, and uh, I am drinking coffee. This is really coffee, because I take this serious, because I'm a professional. Yeah, hey, I'm using a mug. I'm using a mug, because I want to take it seriously. I said I don't drink coffee. Plus, it's three in the afternoon. Is that coffee? <laughs> is that coffee, Ben Pace? Coffee. Okay, see? We're it's professional. horrific. <laughs> Lead tasty. Well, may maybe I should, since we have a 45 minute limit, since Angela has a family commitment, we have Nathan Basil with us, who is, of course, Leslie Vernon. Angela Gothels, I'm going to get your, uh, your, your married name, right? So Angela Gothels Sauter, <laughs> correct? Two, two long O sounds, and then you got it perfect. <laughs> you, gotta full, you gotta use your full Facebook name. It's Go So. Like go So. Name. The longer I know her, the more names she gets. I don't know. That's what, true. <laughs> just keeps adding on. Yeah. She's pretty orange. That's we right. We have with us the uh, delightful and fun, and I'm discovering never serious, <laughs> Sir Ben Pace. Uh, Is anyone here ever serious? I sleep serious. Uh, what's up? I'm Ben Pace. I played Doug. You might remember me by the guy that you don't really remember from the movie. I'm ben, Pope turn Pace. around and then they'll remember you. The only character who never finishes a sentence in the entire movie, but spoiler alert, I live. So, but happy to be here, everybody. Suck it, Tom. Well, you are the one that comes up with the line about being prepared for a cooking school so right the memorable line thank you that that one was great <laughs> <laughs> but uh no it's fun to be here with my best friends and my new friends welcome me welcome <laughs> welcome you <laughs> we would try to get hold of Scott Glosserman to see if he could join us today. And unfortunately, with them messaging back and forth and today being a holiday, it just uh, it, it didn't work out. But we will keep him in our spirit since he was the guy behind all of this. So, so welcome, welcome, welcome. And I am actually gonna start talking about the movie. So if you guys are so inclined, that would be awesome. Is that why we're here? What's that? Is that why we're here to talk about the movie? That well, and just because these guys are great. I thought we were here I to talk, talk about the hair in the room first. We yeah. got some purple. We got some pink. We got some Saturday morning fever. <laughs> I love the purple pink, my friends. We're in a little bit of a hairy cop. I mean, her hair is almost the same color as my suit. I start off with the, talking about the cast and how amazing it is and how in awe I am of, of just the cast. Not only with you good folks, but then of course, we had Kane Hodder, Robert England, Scott Wilson, Zelda Rubenstein. And unfortunately, a couple of them are no longer with us, but Noah and I had been talking about it and about how we felt that uh, those old world horror 
guys were kind of passing passing the uh, the, the torch, torch. onto on to Leslie and in some case teaching him. How was it working with just these icons, these uh, these awesome people? Uh, amazing, and and uh, in Scott's case, um, it, it, the character that he was playing, you know, mirrored perfectly the person that he was because he was a mentor of a person, and uh, he was playing a mentor for me, and uh, it was <laughs> it was just you know, putting on a suit that fits, um, you know, I learned so much from him just watching him be a human being. I learned as much from him watching him be a human being as I did watching him work. Um, yeah. I, I think also um, something that was striking about, um, about those guys is that um, they really approached the work uh, with uh, joy and integrity and um, generosity, uh, which is not necessarily the case with someone that's got a body of work um, that's so expansive. Uh, you know, there's there's the fear, I guess, that you know they won't really engage, or that they'll be a little distant, or that they'll, you know, they'll they'll kind of, um, you know, not not necessarily, uh, you know jump in the sandbox with everybody and these guys across the board just did you know um beautifully and without uh you know any ego or um any weird you know star behavior it was all you know just let's play and let's work and and they all believed in the film and and believed in us and trusted us which was incredibly um, encouraging and a real honor. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing. I, I, of I, which, I, one of our our guests is in the uh, in the waiting room, and I'm going to admit him. And I think this is a perfect time to admit him to the asylum. That is, admit us. him to the asylum. And yeah. he knows yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I forgot that Angela can't see everyone, so she just had no reaction. So I was really confused at first. No, <laughs> you Whoa. have to speak for me to see. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we were just uh, discussing how it was to work with the horror icons and then passing the torch on to Leslie, and uh, so we were. This was a perfect time for you to. Oh, us, King. So very good. I sorry about the background here. It's uh, I'm at my house in Park City, Utah, and I have to do it in the garage. So <laughs> this is God speaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> so don't hold back, Nathan. <laughs> Nathan. Uh, no, it's, uh, no, it's uh, great I have too many end guys. <laughs> but uh, it's the second time you called me Nathan. I know it is. I know it. Should I be flattered or insulted? I don't know yet. <laughs> and should Nathan be flattered or insulted? He should obviously be flattered, but for me, everybody's <laughs> flattered. You're you're both pretty. <laughs> oh, thanks. What about me? Oh, you're, you're gorgeous. gorgeous. <laughs> you're the prettiest of the group. <laughs> well, okay. Sure. <laughs> Do you ski or snowboard, Kane? Uh, neither one, oddly enough. Snowshoe? Uh, I have, but more golf. Oh. Uh, we, we have two amazing courses here. Yeah. And I've uh, been playing with my sons. Both my sons have been working from home, so they've been here for a couple months with us. So it's fantastic. I was just up there three weeks ago. I'm Ben, by the way. We've never met. Good to see you. How are you doing, Ben? Uh, yeah. Where were you? In Park City? Yeah. I go oh, every year. And were you in a hotel or with friends? Uh, condo, Silver King, right off of uh, Empire Drive. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm in a place called Promontory. Nice. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's just, it's a, you know, a little bit of a drive outside of Park City, but. Great. That sounds a little close to purgatory. <laughs> True. <laughs> That's intentional. It's certainly isn't by accident, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So we had just been talking, or I was trying to sort of rally this crew into talking about the movie because they're so delightful and so delighted to, to see each other and it's a wonderful thing. But about just the amazing cast that was in Behind the Mask. And um, sadly, uh, Zelda Rubinstein and Scott Wilson are no longer with us, but thankfully, uh, you and Robert are. So Kane, thank you so much for joining us. And I'll, I'll really try not to compare Behind the Mask to Victor Crowley too much, <laughs> but well, I mean, you <laughs> know, my favorite films. You, you guys are all the real, should take all the real credit for making the movie what it is because I had such a small part. I was just happy to be part of it, you know? Well, How did that come about, you getting that cameo? You know, I, I should have thought about that. I don't remember, actually. How, how he was it, just there. You know, they were filming, and he was just there. <laughs> yeah, you were just sitting <laughs> on the hedges. I showed hey, up. Look, there's Kane Hodder. Let's go with film hat in hand and said, can I have a job, please? <laughs> and, if, and if you don't give me one, I'll kill you. So <laughs> it works pretty well. <laughs> Hey, well, you know, it's funny because my, my favorite type of films, and I joke about it, but it is true, Victor Crowley and Behind the Mask are two of my favorite films. And I like the horror comedies, obviously. And yet, um, in Behind the Mask, it was a horror comedy, but that was still kind of new for that time. Was it, uh, was it exciting for you reading the scripts? And, and being a part of it, or was it kind of intimidating that you didn't know how people would take it? I think horror comedies are finally getting to a point they're being understood a bit more now. Um, now that they're getting not as good? Well, we've had, you know, I think, I don't think Cabin in the Woods could have happened if Behind the Mask hadn't happened. Hmm. You know, well, I think there was just that. was a part of the script process longer than any of the rest of us, I think, and, uh, mm -hmm and probably had a chance to see it evolve a little bit from where it was in its conception phase uh, and then developing all the way through, you know, post and, and whatnot. So uh, did you, Ben, uh, did it? <clears throat> yeah, uh, it, uh, I did a number of table reads with Scott and uh, Scott Glossman, the director and everybody uh, for months before it went down. Um, it changed a little bit. I, I feel like it was a little even campier, the first versions, and it kind of coalesced a little more with the serious horror elements. Um, and then things were even changing. You know, the writer, David Stevie, was on set most of the time. He was also, you know, helping to produce, and uh, Scott, the director, was helping to write. So there was a lot of flux during, you know, the script and a, lot, a fair amount of improv and a good amount of movement going on. And then, you know, I think even seeing the edited version, they cut out a lot of extra scenes and really trimmed it down. So, mm -hmm. you know, they say a movie is made three times when it's written, when it's shot, and when it's edited. So I think this one in particular was three pretty distinct movies throughout that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny because I remember um, watching that earlier edit, a uh, screening of that earlier edit, <clears throat> and um, it just didn't work. And I was really, I, I left that feeling really disappointed, just feeling like, oh man, it's such a shame that our movie is never going to be seen, you know? But then <laughs> in the second edit, uh, it all came around and um, the tone was just there of a slasher. And that's what was missing the, the first round uh, was just that slasher tone, the, the real uh, kind of old school, you know, late 70s, early 80s uh, slasher tone. And uh, mm -hmm. I was so glad that they were able to find a way to, to make, to bring that out. <clears throat> but to answer your question, Donna Jean, I think on set, we all thought it was the best thing that had, like the biggest <laughs> gift to cinema ever. We were all you know, writing our Golden Globe acceptance speeches every night, pretty much. So we were all pretty happy to be there, as, as far as I recall. And, and for, you know, all of us know how difficult it is to walk the fine line of keeping something scary, but also incorporating comedy into it. There's no reason you can't, but you have to be very careful about how you do it. And uh, I think we did it with this film and, and you know, some other ones I did after this, but it's uh, not an e easy thing. I think people think, ah, you know, 
you you just throw in some jokes, but you can't have it at the expense of the, you know, suspense. So it's just a tricky thing, and I think it worked well in this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would also I would also add to something to note. I think is that I feel like we all had different um, sort of guardians of different aspects. So we had like people who really knew the genre well and kind of were, were guardians of the integrity of that. We had, mm -hmm. you know, the amazing comedic chops of, of Ben and Britain. Um, we had, you know, uh, Juilliard trained Nathan Basil. <laughs> we had like, you know, we, we, had, we had representatives. We had, you know, horror icons like Kane. We had people who were who were kind of uh, looking out for different aspects and making sure that they were, um, you know, it, it, that they were honored. Um, and, and, and then there was me who came to this not really being a fan of horror, not because I didn't like it, but just because I, I, I don't like being scared. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, so I, I really didn't know anything about the archetypes. I didn't really know about the genre. I, I just, I, I kind of approached it, uh, you know, from the point of, of, you know, telling a story as I think we all did and ultimately honoring the characters and the integrity of the characters, I think. And like you said, Kane, the comedy comes from the truth of the character. Um, it's not just like, you know, joke punchline. It's, you know, it's, um, you know, needs and wants and, and you know, that, that kind of character stuff that, uh, that we all geek out on. So I, I, I think that we all kind of were guardians of different aspects and it, and it kind of all, like Ben said, coalesced in a really, um, in a really totally awesome way. Uh -huh. well, I think if you're throwing compliments around there that Angela really was the, you know, the emotional kind of core of this thing and her just being so realistic and, you know, r present and uh, <clears throat> talented <clears throat> really, you know, uh, gave it, what is it? Rule number one, you need an anchor. And I think she really nailed that. Oh. Also, it's kind of interesting that Nathan was like very funny when you watched the movie, but he was not playing it comedically, you know what I mean? So it was sort of the juxtaposition of what he's saying and what he's doing when the audience actually knows what's happening. So you know, part of that is the genius uh, of the writing. David and Scott got, got really right. Was they found a perfect uh, a perfect you know marriage point of um, just really absurdly high stakes and um, and. Uh, a, an absurdity about it all, you know, uh, just, you know, people truly wanting things, but, um, but the things that they want is just kind of skewed a little bit. And so it, it blends a real great, it's a, a perfect tone of, of comedy for me. Uh, I've always loved like Monty Python, you know, um, is for me funny because it's people being very serious about something. What they're serious about is ridiculous, you know? <laughs> they're very genuinely, earnestly, 100% about what it is that they're about, you know? And, uh, and that's what we were able to do with the movie was just be really, really sincerely 100% behind this thing. This thing just happens to be murdering people serially. And, um, and that was just that was just the conceit that was given, you know. And this guy, he he doesn't apologize like a doctor doesn't apologize for saving lives. He's not going to apologize for being on the other end of the spectrum, you know. He <laughs> does what he does, and he's proud of of the quality of the work, you know. So um, it, it, that's that was all in the script. It was all there, you know. There was also that tone um, of good versus evil. You know, but from uh, Leslie and Taylor, and Taylor was such a good person. She was very innocent, but she was bright enough to catch on to what was going on. And I have found that there really are layers in Behind the Mask. And after you know some of the some of those things, and you watch it again, you see it differently. You know, and some of the things that you're just thinking, oh. You know, so this is what Leslie was really doing, and it looked like he was doing this, and 
it's just for me it was just en enjoyable watching it multiple times over for sure so that's a sign of a great movie or a great book as well as as soon as you finish it you want to watch it or read it again because you're like i know i missed some things yeah i think watching this movie for the first time i instantly fell in love with it so it was like when i found mm -hmm. out i was gonna mm -hmm. have angel and nathan over for pop rock and horror i was like i want to sit with them so it was just a it was a, yeah it was a really enjoyable movie and i was like i want to watch this right now again it's like it's like one in the morning it's like i want to watch it again let's watch it again did you watch there's it multiple recently? viewings, I think, because of, you know, like the, the contributions of Kane, you know, um, if you are a fan of horror, you are going to find all these little nuggets of just fantastic reference. And, mm -hmm. you know, or, uh, you, the, the, just throughout, um, there was a lot of attention paid to um, not just what's happening in the foreground, but what's happening in the background. And, um, and so layers were kind of built in visually, layers were built in um, uh, after we wrapped, uh, they shot the sequence with Kane and it's a fantastic contribution because um, if you don't know any of the references, mm -hmm. uh, you can still watch the movie and get a, a certain value out of it because of uh, the way that it breaks down horror into conventions and and you can apply those conventions to other movies and it just provides a lens, you know, with which you can view the other movies from. Mm -hmm. But if you do know these movies that are being referenced, if you do know these characters and these actors who are, who are being referenced, then you have in your initial viewing already so much more depth and connection to, to the movie because of the references we're borrowing, you know? Yeah. Like if you, right, it's like a, a wine connoisseur gets more out of good wine, but anyone can drink wine and enjoy it. Right. So Donna, should I just get straight into the question now then? Go right, right ahead. I was actually thinking so, about that. No one I, I was actually, I was going to bring that up later in the interview about all the Easter eggs I saw. So watching, the, watching it last night, I saw, well, obviously, Kane entering the uh, house on Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Nancy's house. Then there's the rabbit thing whatever it's called the stripper red rabbit red rabbit yeah. that one red rabbit. um i know i just noticed the 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 cube from hellraiser is in the movie the twin from nightmare on elm street and then in the background when you're putting on the uh the makeup there's the shining very good music from the ballroom very and good. i thought so uh when scott wilson was talking about his role in the 60s and 70s, I was thinking, I was like, what movies were like, slasher movies were popular then? And I came up with absolutely nothing. So I went to Google, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's right or not, but it, um, in, uh, in some article it said that he was a part of, he was the killer of the original Black Christmas, as well as having a role in the toolbox murders. I don't know if that's right, but I saw that on, on the Google. I think that's what David Stevie has suggested is that was a kind of inspiration for him for Eugene was that uh, those character references you just you just made. Did I miss any other Easter eggs or is that all of them? Did sure. I get, or if, if I got all no of them. dose from wasn't that Nightmare on Elm Street Nightmare when you were putting on the makeup? My mom. Oh. Uh, uh, what else? There's no dose in the in the. Isn't, don't you have a little pill bottle of no dos on the camera there? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> when was the last time you watched this movie, Angela? When it came out? It's been, no, I've seen it since then. I used to, I used to sometimes, um, like, put on the, uh, the DVD with the commentary, like, when I was missing people. Um, <laughs> not to get too like weird and i don't know um that's not that's not weird right <laughs> that's totally not weird that's, oh, so no. No. Um, that's sweet do you know how yeah. excited i am just um, not at all than you guys talking because i love you and i miss you so it makes sense to me yeah you could just call angela <laughs> right? haven't it's watched, like, i haven't watched yeah but that's in weird a few years, i think it's it's been a number of years since I've seen it. Yeah, we've seen it so many times at like festivals and that kind of stuff. But yeah, other Easter eggs. 
I watched it uh, this last year for the first time with my boys, their first time seeing it. Um, my oldest is 17 and my, my youngest is uh, 13 and um, they'd never seen it before. So this was like their inaugural viewing. And uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they liked it. Yeah. You sound really, you sound like really sure about that. It's like, yeah, they liked it. <laughs> I don't you know. Teenage boys are so emotionally forthcoming, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they were, you know, they, they enjoyed the movie and they were maybe moderate, moderately impressed with their old man. Well, little Nate Jr. came as a little baby to the set. Yeah. Oh, right, he did. Yep. Amazing. My little boy, I remember picking him up uh, from the airport and uh, him waddling down the, right. the walkway. You were in full makeup. <laughs> Mask on. Yeah. Hand size. Come to me, boy. Right. <laughs> well, let me ask you, Kane, I know you and Robert England are old friends. How was it working with Robert? Well, I mean, considering we've known each other for quite a while, we haven't worked together much at all, really. Mm. Um, the, this film we did, you know, the first Hatchet film, but we've known each other for a long, long time. The very first time I worked with him was before either one of us was known for our characters. Mm -hmm. It was uh, a TV show uh, about outer space. Uh, uh, v? What? Yeah, V. And or you that, ate the rats or something. Yeah, yes, or exactly. Remember. And uh, that was the first time we worked together. And I believe I, I hadn't done any Jason stuff and he, I don't believe had done Freddy yet, or at least it wasn't out. And it was just interesting that later years we would both become known for a certain character, but you know, he's always been a, a good friend and I do like working with him because he's very creative. Uh, I, I love working with people that uh, kind of ad lib during a scene. Shoot a scene one way, and then in the second take, I don't know how you guys feel, but because I'm not a trained actor, I'm a, a stunt man that you know started acting because of that. Right. And to be able to work with someone who might completely change their dialogue in a second take, but I personally enjoy that because then there's no way that any of your responses or whatever can seem rehearsed because you've never heard that line before. So my kitty just joined me. If you're quick enough, then you can just uh, go with it. And I love doing scenes like that. I don't know how everybody else feels, but. I, I think I've, I tend to be a little frustrating because I, I tend to not do the scene the same way twice. It just, I, it, it bores me to not be exploring and finding things and responding to things and um so i think <laughs> it can be taken to an extreme but um but yeah i i love that way of working too and this was definitely a film that fostered a kind of creative approach right well, when you think about it too uh keeping keeping the scene fresh will always keep like the other i think would keep the other people in that scene on their toes so like it, it keeps everything fresh and in uh What's the word I'm looking for? Spontaneous. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> I would say I also that uh, I think one thing working with Robert England, who was awesome and so giving, is that he's such a pro and had so much experience that I think one end of it is keeping it fresh, but the other end is knowing that an editor wants, you know, wants the option. So it's like, you, I got one great take doing it this way. I'll do something totally different because he understands how movies are made and, and it's such a veteran pro. You know, there were a number of things where like that bit in the, uh, in the um, barn where he gets stabbed with the scythe. He's like, if you come mm -hmm. up from down and go down, then you'll get a better camera angle. Like he really understood how the camera works, how the editing works. And, you know, offset, uh, we spent a lot of time with him at festivals like South by Southwest. And, you know, he's just super chatty down to earth very knowledgeable about all movies and uh, just so, you know, kind and, you know, just a great dude to be around. So he was, uh, you know, because I saw him as this icon who terrified me as a kid. So it was 
kind of fun to go behind the uh, mask, so to speak, and get to know him. Well, I do have uh, something. This is actually our second surprise that we, as I said, we had tried to contact uh, Scott Glosserman and were unable to make it work that he would be with us. And actually had asked, I had asked Kane if he would do a shout out and he was gracious enough that he offered to join us. But I do have something I would like to play for you. Hello. Please join us this Wednesday, October 7th at 12 noon for part two and see what Robert England has to say. And now I need to get myself some more Death by Chocolate Coffee by Deadly Grounds. See you Wednesday. <laughs>